Welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Thank you so much for spending your lunchtime with us today. I am really excited about today's session because this is all about approvals, which is a, a bit of a hidden gem in uh, the Teams platform. So uh, Neve is going to tell us all about it. We have got lots to show you, not a lot of time. Um, so I'm going to hand straight over to the amazing Neve Birmingham, who's one of our fantastic customer success managers looking after retail. So over to you, Neve. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to be covering um, Microsoft Approvals, which is an app in Microsoft Teams. Um, so I'm going to walk you through what Approvals is, um, how you can find it, and then also how you can create your own approval as well. Um, and then I'm also going to talk you through templates of approvals and how you can start to create your own templates. Um, and then I'm going to share some resources with you and hopefully we'll have some time for some Q&A at the end. OK, so what are approvals? So approvals is um, an application in Microsoft Teams um, and it lets um, users automate approval requests. Um, so you can edit approvals, you can view them and you can manage approvals all from that single place in Microsoft Teams. Um, you can use it across desktop and mobile, so it's really great um, if you're on the go. Um, and you can also um, utilise existing templates that are available within the application to get you going really quickly. Um, but you can also create your own as well, and we're going to cover that today um, in a bit more detail. There are um, some out-of-the-box integrations with um, some e-signature um, applications, so things like Adobe Sign and DocuSign. So if you use either of those, um, they are available out of the box to utilise with the Microsoft Approvals application. Um, and there's also some really exciting um, graph APIs coming soon, so you can start to integrate them with um, some line of business applications that you have within your organization. So um, when I think about sort of some real life examples of where you might want to use approvals, things like um, submitting expenses, or um, if you have a policy where you need to get approval for working from home or going into the office, that can be a really great use case as well. Um, and also things like social media. So um, social media are now, um, we have accounts which are pretty official for our companies um, and some managers um, might want to review a copy of what you're about to post to social media before it goes live. Um, so content creators can prepare posts and then send them for approval and the content manager can review everything and approve it before um, it's published live to social media. So just hopefully um, a nice little example there and we're going to bring that one to life as we go through um, this presentation. So First off, where can you find the Approvals app? So this is in the same place as um, every other application in Microsoft Teams. If you head to the left hand navigation rail and click on the three dots, you can search for Approvals there. Um, and it's the little tick with the, um, the arrow around the outside, and that is your Approvals app. If this is something you want to use on a regular basis, you can right click on approvals and pin that so it stays on that left hand navigation rail for you. And um, I also wanted to highlight as well on the top right hand side of the screen, and um, you can also use approvals in um, a chat or in a channel as well. And you can do this from the messaging extension across the bottom. So it probably is quite small, um, so do apologise for that. But um, again, it's that same um, icon, which is the tick and the arrow around the outside of it. And you can really quickly spin up an approval um, in that chat or in that channel as well. So when you go into the approvals app, this is what is called the approvals hub. And this is where you can have a look at all of the approvals that you've sent um, to other people. And um, you can also have a look at all of the approvals that have been received as well. So anything that has um, been sent across to you to review, um, there is a received tab as well on sort of the top left hand side you can see there. Um, you will also have the different sections for approvals. So you'll have your um, your basic approvals and then you'll have your e-signature approvals as well. So um, this is Adobe Sign and also DocuSign. They're sort of in separate se sections for you to be able to navigate between. Um, I've only got one approval in here. So this is a demo environment, but um, if you have multiple, you can also filter across the top as well to really quickly find um, any approvals that you're particularly interested in um, and you can export it as well. Um, but here you sort of get this overview of um, 
you know, the status of where your approval is, whether it's requested or approved or declined. Um, and then you also sort of get um, when it was sent and when it was created as well. So from here, you can click um, new approval request on the top right hand side. And this is how you can spin up a brand new approval. And we're going to go through the steps to do that now. When you click that button, this is um, what you will see. So you have the option to just have a basic request. Um, you can spin up an e-signature request as well. Um, we're not going to be covering that today, but in the resources section at the end, um, I do have a video that you can go away and watch, which sort of brings that to life for you. But it follows a very similar process to what we're going to be going through today. Um, and you can also leverage some templates as well. So um, pre-configured templates, which are available for certain types of requests, but we're going to cover that a bit later on as well. So just for now, we're going to click basic request. And once you click that, you then get this form to complete. So you get sort of the name of the request, so to give it um, give it a title, um, and then you can add in the people who need to approve this. So you can add in a single person or you can add in multiple people as well. Um, if you do need to make sure that, let's say you put three people in to approve and you need a, an approval for all three of them, you can um, toggle that box which says require response from all recipients to make sure that you get an approval from all three of them. And um, you also have this new toggle at the top as well, which where it says require responses in an assigned order. Um, and let's say you wanted this to go to person number one, and once they approve it, then it goes to person number two, um, you can define that order. And so it automatically goes through that loop for you um, and then comes back to you once it's all been approved. Um, you have a few more options as well. You can set the priority of this from a drop down box and you can add in some additional details. So I'm going to I've just pre-populated this one. So what I've done is I've added in um, Adele to be my approver, and this is for a LinkedIn post um, for Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, I just asked her to um, review this before I send it out. Um, and then if I scroll down a little bit as well, there is some more um, options here at the bottom. So there is this ability um, to add an attachment to um, change custom responses and also to send to another environment. So adding an attachment is as it sounds, you can browse from OneDrive or your computer and add an attachment for them to review. Um, custom responses, um, these are by default, it will be um, when, the re when the approval goes to um, your approver, they will be able to click um, one of two buttons and it will be approve or reject but you can change it if you want to. So if you wanted it to be yes or no, um, that's when you would click on that custom responses and you can change sort of what the um, approval will see. Um, and then that sends to another environment. If you wanted to send it to maybe to a demo um, environment, um, that is what that toggles for there. So we're gonna add an attachment to walk you through what that looks like. Um, and then again, you can browse from OneDrive or upload from your computer. So I have browsed my OneDrive and it attaches it as a link. So you don't have a duplicate um, copy. It is the live file um, linked from your OneDrive. And then once you're happy, you can click send. Once you have sent your approval, it will then come into your approvals hub. And this is where you will see that latest post. You'll see it right at the top LinkedIn GAD post um, and you'll see it's in the requested state. Um, because that's with Adele to approve. Um, if I click into that um, approval, I will then be able to do a couple of things. So I can see um, the status that is with is pending a response from Adele. Um, but I have a couple of options at the bottom as well. So I can cancel that request altogether if I've sent it and actually um, I'd send it by accident and I don't need uh, Adele's approval anymore. I can cancel it from there. Um, but I can also follow up as well. And if I click that follow up button, that just sends a little notification to Adele just to pop it to the top of um, her list to go in and approve for me. So what I've done now is I have switched over to Adele's profile and we're going to see um, what the journey looks like for Adele as an approver when that comes through to her. So what you'll see is in the activity pane, um, she has received um, a follow up request as we just um, sent her that extra notification um, to go in and um, do this approval. So when she clicks on that um, item in her activity feed, um, it will open up the approvals app and actually open up the approval for her to complete. 
So here she can review the information so she can um, see the name of the approval and um, the details that we added for her. Um, she can open up that document to review and um, add in any comments um, and then she has a few options at the bottom as well. So the first one is reassign. So if Adele opens this and thinks, actually, this is not really for me to approve, this might need to go to somebody else, she can click on that button and um, maybe wants to reassign it to Lee and she could click and confirm. But for today, we're going to leave it with Adele for her to actually complete. So it's going to click back. Um, so Adele has reviewed the information. She's happy for this to be shared on LinkedIn. Um, and so then she can go there and click approve. Once she's clicked approve in the approvals app, she will then see in the received section um, that she has approved that uh, LinkedIn GAD post and she can go and review that any time in the future if she wants to go back in and see what she approved. So that will stay there for her. OK, um, then what we're going to do now is we're going to flip back to that original requester. So the person who sent that approval to Adele just to see what that um, that journey looks like um, after that approval has been approved. So um, as the uh, same way as Adele, they get a notification in that activity feed um, and it will say final status approved on that LinkedIn um, gadget post. So um, if you click into that, you will then be able to see Adele's comments um, following her approval. And you can save that as a PDF as well if you wanted to um, store that, maybe for like an audit trail or something in the future. Um, and then once that's also as well, if they were able to open up the approvals app and go into that approvals hub that we spoke about earlier, that's where they can see um, that the LinkedIn GAD post has changed from requested to approved because um, Adele has um, approved that. Um, ask. OK, let's move on to templates. So um, you can um, create your own templates um, and share them with people um, across the organisation. Um, and you can do this by clicking on the create or manage templates which is on the bottom left hand side. And this is in the approvals app. Um, it's worth mentioning that um, only team owners and admins can create templates. So if you're an admin, you can create organisation wise templates. Um, but if you're a team owner, you can create um, a template which is specific to your Microsoft team as well. So when you click into templates, you will be able to see some of the popular templates which have already been created out of the box. Um, and you can also um, drop down here where it says organisation wise. So that's showing you all of the templates which are available across the organisation. If you drop down um, you'll also be able to see all of the teams that you're a part of. And if you click into any of those teams um, you're a part of, you'll be able to see any templates that have been created for that specific team in the past as well. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new template. So that's on the top right hand side and we're going to create one from scratch. But what you could do as well is you could actually um, utilise one of the existing templates as a start of a 10 and then edit um, that template. So I'm going to create this team wide um, you can do this organisation wide, but like I said, you'd have to be a team um, an admin to be able to do that. And we're going to do this one for it team wide. Um, I'm going to create a template for my sales and marketing team. And once you've clicked that team, you can click done. And um, what this will do is it will surface all the teams that you're a part of and um, that you're a team owner for. Um, and you'll be able to select the team that you want to create the template for. And once you're ready, click done. Um, so in here, this is where you can start customising your template. And it's um, very similar to Microsoft Forms. And you'll sort of see that as we go through. Um, but you can give a template a name and you can also give it a description as well. So I'm going to call it social media comms approval. And this is for um, authorising the um, any post to social media. And I've given it a little description as well. Um, where I've highlighted in red here, you can change the, um, the, te the template icon and colour if you want to personalise it a little bit. So if you just click on that you'll be able to change the colour, pick an icon, which is relevant um, for this form, sorry, for this approval. Once you're happy, click done. So I've just made it pink um, and changed the logo. 
Once you're happy with that, you can click next on the top right hand side and then you can um, design your form. And this is where it looks very similar to Microsoft Forms. So if we click add new, um, you can choose from a choice question, a text question or a date question on your for on your um, on your form. So I'm going to start adding in a choice question. And so this is what platform um, will you be posting to? And I've popped in all of the popular social media platforms um, and you'll see at the bottom you have the option for multiple answers and to make it a required field as well. So I've put select all that apply. Um, and then you can add all your questions and then once you're ready, once you finish, you can click next. And then this is the next section where you can choose whether you want to have file attachments and um, whether you want to predefine the order of people to approve it um, and whether you want to um, have comments on or off and also whether you want any custom responses. So at the moment it will be um, approve or reject that approver and um, but you can also change that as well to yes, no or something more um, beneficial for you. Once you're happy, you can click preview. So I've popped this file attachment on. Um, and then when you preview that form, you'll see what that approval will look like. And if you're happy with it, you can click publish. Once you've published, it will then show um, in your templates for sales and marketing because you've published it just to that team. So um, that was um, everything I plan to go through today. Um, this, there are some more resources here. I'm conscious we went through quite quickly because we've only got the 20 minutes. But um, if you do want to have an overview in more detail, you can um, review the, um, the page that we have available. Um, if you're interested in e-signatures, you can have a look there as well. And if you want to create those all by templates, um, there's a bit more information there for you. But Joe, I will hand back over to you. Thanks, Neve. Uh, some questions in the chat. I've answered a couple of them. But one of the questions is, can the approver edit the attached file and return within the uh, approval request? So uh, because it's a link to that file, um, if, if they have edit access to that file, they'll be able to go in and um, provide any updates in the attachment. So, and then they could add it in the comments that they've made some changes, maybe, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the other thing, I suppose, if you were doing this with a, a Power Automate template, you could probably build that in as well. Maybe a, a kind of an edit edit the attachment or something I think I think there's a there's a couple of extra possibilities if you go through the Power Automate side rather than the standard templates as well. Please do join us next week and have a lovely rest of your week. Thanks, everybody.